Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining the Guitar Masterclass with Soul Piano Studio today. Today we're going to talk about some fun facts about learning an instrument and how do we make it interesting for us to take it on as, as a part of our long-term journey. So I just want to read this quote, it's not fun every time you play an instrument, then you're not doing it right. So the, this is the motto for uh, us as well at Soul Piano, the teachers that we have to, over here and the way we teach our students. We like to make the course extremely fun. And that doesn't mean that uh, you need to pick it up and then do your scales and chords and think of it as, oh, I need to practice. But it's more like, hey, 10 minutes every day, just 10 minutes every day, I want to pick up my instrument, whether it's guitar or it's a keyboard, and I want to make it fun. Let's do something new every single day. So that's how we differentiate ourselves from other schools. And I'm going to take you on to the next slide. I want to ask you a question. So to make it more fun and fulfilling, what do you think would be the right way? Should we focus on fun, not mastery? Play the instrument, don't practice, play new and challenging things. So what we just discussed is that we, we're going to be focusing on enjoying the instrument, enjoying the entire process and the journey. So if you don't create a fun journey, we won't be able to enjoy to master the instrument. Moving on to the next slide. Sweetie, over to you to talking about guitar and fun facts about music. Hello, thank you, Sarika. So hello, everyone. Let's talk about some fun facts about music. So music is best tool, I feel to study and uh, concentrate better in studies. And it pro also provides positive mood and allow us to express emotions because sometimes we are unable to say anything. We have something in mind and it is very difficult to say something. But if we hear the music which we like, which we are connecting to our uh, emotions and everything, so it is very easy for us to express. And of course, it keeps your ha ha uh, heart and he uh, healthy. Okay, and uh, of course, listening to music enhances your physical performance. And of course, when we say about it creates positive mood, so obviously it will dissolve your all our stress. So let's start with the main components of music. All right, so we have four major components of the music. One is rhythm, pitch, melody, and harmony. So can anyone explain me or tell me what is rhythm? What does it mean to you in very simple words? Don't have to elaborate it. Um, I think uh, rhythm is really similar to the beats of a song. Like um, if um, like w uh, when you do dance, you say um, some number. So you do one, two, three, four. I think the beats of the song song uh, and the rhythm is uh, like the flow of the song and the um and what uh, beat the song is going in uh, yeah rhythm for me is usually when you hear the song and you kind of attach to it and then like you know as Nehmat said the beats of it also are there okay let me explain you in a very very simple words what is rhythm Rhythm is a combination or a sequence of long and short voice. We say voice, okay? We are uh, not coming to the beats. A combination of long and short voice. What is long and short voice? We say an example of tea, coffee. If we clap, tea, it will go on. Tea. And then we say coffee, coffee. So these are two short voices coming and tea is a long voice coming. Tea. Coffee, coffee, tea. So it is a long voice combination of long voice, short voice. It is creating a kind of rhythm. Another example, if we see, I'm tapping it on a object. This is we see a short voice. If the same, I'm tapping on my book. It will be a long voice. This way, we explain rhythm that a combination or a sequence of long and short voice with respect to time. It is very important to be on a time. In a proper time. All right. So the next word, uh, have you understood uh, Nehmat and Vidushi? Yes. What does pitch means to you? What do you understand by the word pitch? Um, I don't really know how to describe uh, what pitch is, but I think uh, they are the low notes of a song or um, a music piece. Low notes. Okay. So pitch is the voice, the high voice and the low voice. 
Okay, what we say high voice, what does it mean? The voice will be thinner or we say a sharp kind of voice if the same at me. The voice got broader. So this is low pitch. Okay, so I'm going to play something and you have to say the note was high or low. So you have to say me a high pitch or low pitch. Okay. Hi. Hi pitch. Low. Low. That's high only. That's high. If we play. Okay, I'm going to play the same note high and the same note low. Okay. I'm going to play a note C. That low. is low. The note is saying only the pitch is getting high and low. Okay. Now comes the next part, melody. What does melody mean to you? I think melody is the tune of the song and the background music. Perfect answer from both of you. Melody is the tune, what we hum or the main part of the song, whatever we say. Okay. And it goes along with the lyrics. Now, harmony. Harmony is when two or more voice we are playing or coming simultaneously. Okay, if we say, uh, let's say, if I play it like this, this is we say a melody or a tune. If we, I'm going to play it like this, all the three voices will come together. Or, Harmony. Melody and harmony. Melodic and harmonic are two different words. Melody is only a tune. Harmony is when two or more voices we are playing simultaneously. Okay. So when all these three, four things we coming together, voice, high voice, low voice, they are creating a melody. Then if we go together, it will create harmony. And when we play it in a proper rhythm, it will whole create a beautiful music. Okay. So, how many types of guitar you all know? We have variants of guitar, uh, approximately more than 10 or 12. We have uh, almost more, uh, many guitar we have. Uh, but the major types of guitar are these four types of guitar. One is classical, one is acoustic. Both looks pretty same, but there is a difference. I'll show you. Let's discuss the classical ones first. This is the classical guitar I am holding right now. It has a broader fretboard and the string, the most important difference is the string is plastic. It is not metal strings. The fretboard is broader and the box is also a little broader. This is a classical guitar. We play with fingers, plucking. We say finger plucking. Like if I have to play a song for you, I'm going to play. the one with nylon strings yes this is nylon string data and uh, we call it plastic also nylon also and the next one we have acoustic guitar this is acoustic, acoustic guitar. guitar has metal strings acoustic guitar has metal strings and if you compare the board the fretboard this is thinner and this is broader even from this side, if you turn it, you can see the difference. So, have you understood the two basic differences? 
acoustic and metal will mostly look same only the difference in the strings and the style we play okay now the comes electric guitar i think it is his favorite <laughs> okay so electric guitar is everybody knows it is a very different style it is very thinner i don't have electric guitar right now and <clears throat> we have to connect it with the amplifier and uh, we have uh, uh, we, what we say uh, i'm forgetting the name processor so and another one is bass string guitar bass string why bass string it has only four strings it doesn't have six strings these four strings the the two bottom strings are not there in the bass guitar we have the top four strings in a bass guitar okay so uh, just like a human body we have three parts head neck and a body in a guitar also we have a head neck and a body okay in the head we have headstock machine heads or we say tuning heads we have to rotate it clockwise or anti clockwise to tune a guitar and we, uh, he, we have a nut here from here the strings come from top and coming from down towards this side okay in a neck we this neck is called a fretboard fretboard f r e t b o r a r d this is called fret what is fret this line this uh, vertical line is called fret now comes the body this is called body or we say sound board a sound hole is there and a bridge okay these are more main parts of a guitar we have now comes how to hold a guitar okay so we have a band over here this band we take a rest on a thigh the right thigh or on the left thigh it's all your choice when we play classical guitar we have a footstool just below our left leg and we put it like this we hold it like this and we play when we talk about when we play classical guitar but for acoustic we can keep either on the left thigh this part or on the right thigh according to your comfort zone okay and this part of your guitar will touch our chest you don't have to hold it too tight and bend it like this as we going to hurt our chest the back should be straight it should not be slouched like this because after 5 10 minutes your back will start paining so it is very important to have a good posture while holding a guitar another thing when our right hand will come from this side and this part of your guitar will touch your this part of your arm okay and with the right hand uh, left hand we are uh, playing the notes and we are pressing the strings on a fretboard okay this hand also will not be going like this like if you are going to play guitar like this again it will be a wrong posture the hand should be free it should not go inside like this another thing now comes flat drum this is flat drum a triangular part this is the tapered part of the flat drum and this is the flattened part we make a hook of a index finger on the first knuckle we put the flattened part and just holding it with our thumb like this and this is how we are holding flat drum we don't have to hold it too much from inside like this else our finger skin will going to touch the strings how many strings do we have in a guitar i think we have six uh, we have six strings from a guitar of a guitar okay from the bottom we will see the thinnest one is the number one string and the thickest one is number six string one two three four five six the thickest one is sixth string the thinnest one is number one string now comes the name of the string first string is e second string b third string g fourth string d fifth, fifth string is a sixth string is again e now why they are named e b g a d whatever why because the sound which is coming the pitch 
it is E. The note is E, and we are not pressing any fret. We are playing it open. So this is why they are named. Now, how to remember that? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. E, B, G, D, A, again E. Everybody gets dinner at evening. Everybody gets dinner at evening. You only have to remember this sentence. From the bottom, you have to count the first E and the last E is every and evening is every is the first string. Evening is the sixth string. All right. Any anything else you want to ask? Um. Uh. Yeah. I just have one question. Yeah. Uh, what's the pick guard for? Pick guard. If we are playing it. Um, our plectrum goes here, so it yeah. does not create any scratch. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, okay. So just like we have languages, Hindi, English, French, Germany, music also have a language. People say music doesn't have any language. It does have a language, which is called staff notation. <laughs> Why it is a language? Because with staff notation, just like a language, if we say Hindi or English, we read and write, right? Uh, we read the notes, alphabets, and then we make a letter, sentence, word, and then we can speak it. So the music also, we can write, and then we can play it. Or if uh, some music is there, we say, I have this music. So I'll see and play. I have not heard this melody before, but I can read and play it. So this language of music is called staff notation. Okay. We have this, uh, Sarika, can you point on the treble clef? Sure. Yeah. So this is called a treble clef. If we say here, this. Are you able to see if this? If we say G. Yeah. This is called treble clef or G clef. For guitar, we use this clef. We say treble clef or G clef. In piano, we have one more clef. We say bass clef. I think Nehmat already know. But in guitar, we have only one clef. We say treble clef. Now, what are these black dots called? The arrangement of these black dots over these horizontal lines decides the identity of notes. Arrangement of these black dots on these lines if you can notice some black dots are on the lines some black dots are between the space 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 yeah they are not randomly placed either they are on the line or on the space just bottom of the triple uh, just bottom of this line or here Short line also we have. Yes. This ledger is, line. See, ledger yeah. line we call. This is an imaginary stave lines. Now these horizontal lines are called stave lines. And the arrangement of these black dots on these lines decides the identity. Just like if we see the first note uh, with a ledger line, the note is this. We only have to see, we'll identify the note. But first, I think we need to discuss what are the notes of music we have. What are the seven notes do we have in a music? Can anyone who wants to tell me, Mahamat and Vidushi, what are the seven notes of music do we have? Um. Okay. So, uh, we have C, D, E, mm -hmm. F, G, and uh, A and B. Yes. And it, we can also say it in a Hindi, we say Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Dhani, and then we back to Sa again, the higher pitch C. Okay, and uh, in, we can also call it Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. So here you can see we have given, uh, I have given, written the number C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Uh, can we point on the lower C and higher C, Sarika? This is the lower C. Lower C. Yeah, you, you can explain them. I think it will be a better way because I sure. Can't it, no? Sure. So you can see two C's mentioned here. This one is the middle C in piano, and on guitar, this will be the 
that middle C, this is also a middle C in guitar. This is yeah, this is also yeah. a middle C. Yes. And then this is a higher pitch. This is a higher C. So this one is on a ledger line and this one is in a space. So it's very important for us to notice that this one line, space, line, space, line, space, line, space. And that's how we see the music. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Right? So that's what Sweetie is explaining to you on how the notes are placed on your staff. And these are the notations. So if you see anywhere a note with a cut that there is a ledger line, you have to play middle C. And when you see there is a note on third space third space why third space we are at four spaces from the bottom if we say one two three four on the third space we have note that will be a c it is always a common language and there is a no change for any instrument middle c will be middle c that c will be c if it is placed on the second space it will be c it can't be any other note for any instrument whether it is a violin piano, keyboard, French horn, saxophone, an instrument, it will be same. The notes will remain the same. The language will remain the same. Like a, a letter is A. We, we, uh, we cannot see V, A, uh, A. Okay? Okay. So we're almost towards the end of our guitar masterclass today. Um, we have a three-month program that would include 12 classes starting from January. If you enjoyed today's masterclass and you would like to learn more about the notes of music on guitar or more about the notes of C, D, E, F, G, A, B and how do we play them on the guitar, the position of the fretboard and write reading and writing staff notation like we just discussed. Or if you want to prepare for examinations like Trinity College London is one board that we promote. Of course, there are other boards as well we can teach if that's of your interest. And play songs, of course, like we mentioned right in the beginning uh, of the masterclass that we like to make our classes extremely fun and interactive. So we'll be doing scales, we'll be playing chords, we'll be playing songs and that of your choice. So we will ask you, what do you like to play? What do you like to listen to? And then we will teach you those songs and play along with you. That's how we like to teach um, our classes. So a quick recap of uh, today's masterclass is that what is the most important for fast progress? Is, is, is it the first one? Is it the second or the third? Is it focusing on mastery, playing consistently or practicing long hours? What is the correct answer out of these three? I think it's the second one. Nehmet, what about you? Um, I think it um, may be the third one because practice is really important. Um and uh, I practice piano three days a week, so I think practice is really important. And um, I also think second one is really important because you should keep a track of how much um how many uh, how many times you're playing, and um for how much time you're playing. Right, that's correct. So I would say playing consistently uh would definitely help you progress faster it's like acquiring any new skill any new language like sweetie rightly said so it could mean just 10 minutes a day uh in Emmet, in your case you do three times a week it's because you're playing consistently for those three days for 45 minutes or for 30 minutes that's why you're able to progress and learn every time you come for class so it's very important to to focus on that and take out just 10 minutes a day when you're learning any new skill or any new instrument it's like if you're practicing once a week for three hours it doesn't make any sense you'll end up learning uh, you won't be able to get a good result at the end of the practice you will end up with paining painful fingers nothing else you're going to do and tomorrow on the next very next day you won't be able to practice because yesterday you practiced three hours if you practice 10 minutes every day so that 10 minutes what you practice this is also more, most important that what you practice in those 10 minutes it is important and practicing 10 minutes every day is more important than practicing long hour once or twice so well done. Um, very well answered. I feel like this was a very interactive masterclass. I really enjoyed hearing your answers. Clean the string with a muslin cloth every day that it won't get any rust. Sometimes they absorb the moisture because the guitar is made up of wood. 
so wood tends to absorb moisture even under air, air condition also we mostly have air conditions in our room and sometimes temperature we see in monsoon so the guitar tends to bend why bend because these are the strings we, we have tightened it here these are not loose strings this is creating a tension these are like this part of a guitar and this part of guitar they are pulling towards each other and we have to keep it like this only so it is very important for us to maintain a guitar like we have to cover it we should not leave it like this open whenever we take a practice take it out from a cover uh, i always detune the guitar whenever i finish my practice detune the guitar so that the tension will not be there whenever i am not practicing the tension will not be there in the strings so the guitar will not get to, uh, tend to bend and right. whenever i pick it up for practice i tune the guitar first tune the guitar tuning means nehmat and vidushi uh, we need the strings to sound that particular note if we lose it it will sound different like i'm losing it should sound proper e the note because the string we are saying it is e and then when we done with the practice detune it put it back in the guitar cover uh. Vidhi, so how do you tune your guitar? Do you use mobile tuner app yeah, or something? Yeah, there is a tuner. Uh, there is an instrument called tuner also comes in the market. We put it here. I don't have it right now. And then we tune it. That uh, absorbs the wavelength of the uh, wavelength of the uh, music which uh, which which is coming from the string. So uh, that tells us the note which is uh, coming. It is E or whatever it is required. there is also hazards is written i think wavelength uh, measures in hazards okay we have a tuner in mobile also we have so many applications in mobile that also tunes the guitar perfectly another way to tune a guitar is with a piano like if we say this is middle c so you have to check this note middle c with your middle c of a piano or the fourth octave e third octave b right so we have to match the pitch of the guitar strings with the piano or we can do it the easiest way is using a mobile application any mobile tuner like guitar tuner on mobile <laughs> yeah lovely great well we've come to the end of our master class i hope you all enjoyed